Welcome back to Centrally Speaking, everyone. Centrally Speaking is a program that opens up the conversation around important matters of economics and finance, matters of national importance that have an impact on your life. I'm Sheena. Hi, I'm Anna. I want to big up the people in St. Catherine, specifically Golden Grove. And specifically I'm... Mavis. Oh, Mavis. <laughs> yeah, man. All right. Miss Mavis in Golden Grove, you know yourself. Good evening. <laughs> And I want to send a special shout out to Manchester. Everybody is <laughs> Manchester, big up yourself. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Centrally Speaking. Anna, you know, in the media, there has been a lot of conversation about financial education and consumer protection. I, I do. I personally, I think it is important, especially the financial education um, thrust. Right. Um, we saw it. There's a lot of mistrust of the financial system. There's still not a lot of take up of financial products and services. And that's partly because people really not understand them. Yeah, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, people really not understand. So when you hear people on the radio, yeah, they're trying to explain, but I still think that them talk among themselves. They talk mm. to their peers, their, their fellow experts. You know, I really talk to the man and I tell you the real thing. Mm. Yeah, you know, I talk to me nice. <laughs> <laughs> so I understand. Yeah, you, know, you know, I talk to me so I can understand. You know, so I, I really think that if we're going to, if we're going to get up, get rid of the mistrust or decrease the mistrust, we have to change the way we communicate. And with I think people. I think it's not just how we communicate. Yeah. Uh, I think this mistrust is rigidly embedded. It's it's in our psyche. Yeah. And I think once one person shares it from generation to generation, oh, you know, yeah. it's just where it's we are. Kind of cultural. Yeah. Right. It so is. we so we have to get over that too. Through communication. Yeah, through naturally. communication, right? Mm. Yeah. So um, it is it is it isn't very 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 important right the 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 financial education of our citizens so that is why on today's program we're going to be speaking with melanie williams from bank of jamaica she's a national financial inclusion coordinator and she's going to let us know a little bit more about boj's financial education initiative that's right anna we need to promote financial education so people can make smart financial decisions and protect themselves but before we introduce our special mm -hmm. guest, let's hear from the streets. Do you think enough is being done to educate the public about financial matters? I don't think enough is being done because, you know, as a child growing up, yes, your parents encourage you to save and so on, but that was just basically it. You know, putting little nuggets away to, for a rainy day or for your future. But, you know, as I have transitioned into adulthood, I wish that I would have had more knowledge about finan um, financial, good financial management because certain mistakes that I made in the past wouldn't have been so. So say for instance, you know, I would anticipate that programs could be done in school to capture the youngsters before they enter into the world of work you know, they would be equipped with certain knowledge about financial management, you know, certain investments that they can go in, um, being an entrepreneur, more of those kind of programs can be, you know, done in schools and also to programs on the TV. No, you know, it's all about a money making thing. Eh? Not so much to benefit the public, but to benefit themselves. And I say that because the banks are created to, the banks are designed to create money. And like any other business, they help themselves quite a bit, but they can do far better. And how, I, how do I know that? When you look at the yearly um, report of their profit, then you realize they can do much, much better than what they're doing. The banking is good, but they're not educating the people the way they ought to educate the people. And that's where the problem really comes in. They can do a lot better to give simple education so that they, they average person can understand. Don't speak over their heads. Having basic personal financial skills for me is one of the most important things in order to have a happy, successful and a secure life. However, growing up, information was not readily provided to me in terms of how I should manage money. I mean, separate apart from, you know, mommy or daddy saying, you know, make sure you save a little, but I don't think enough was done growing up in school where they teach you about money management, um, the stock exchange, how you basically can multiply probably one source of income and have several other incomes. So 
I don't think the government has or, you know, even placed enough emphasis on, you know, educating the population. No, I don't think they educate us properly. Because them sometimes they use too so much big word when, when someone will not even understand. I think that the banks can do more. There isn't enough information out mm -hmm. there and I think that the banks can do more to inform people. Our very special guest today is Melanie Williams, National Financial Inclusion Coordinator from Bank of Jamaica. Melanie, welcome to Centrally Speaking. Welcome, Melanie. Uh, it's uh, good to see you, Anna and Sheena again. Welcome back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, Melanie, first off, why is Bank of Jamaica focusing on financial education? Bank of Jamaica recognizes that, as you heard from the feedback from the streets, that often when we speak, we are very speaky spoky. Which is true. Yeah. And very high, high Yeah, yeah. The ordinary Jamaican person does not understand what we're trying to say in right. terms of just communicating basic financial concepts. Right. So we're changing how we approach the whole message of who BOJ is, what we do as a regulator, and what our population needs to know when they're not going to interact with our regulated financial institutions. How do they protect themselves about financial products? They need to understand it. We need to speak in the language of the people. So that's why we're promoting financial education. Okay. All right. So you just made the point that um, how we communicate is speaky, spoky, and highfalutin. You know, um, if we if we listen to the radio, the experts who speak generally they speak to themselves or among themselves because you know even people like me you know to you know to get it sometimes. So you're going to have a financial education program. So I'm I'm thinking that you're going to ensure that the language is simple right it's not speaking to people who have degrees right, <laughs> right? Okay. it is speaking to the ordinary Jamaican how will BOJ promote therefore its financial education program well the work you do here on Centrally Speaking is a major part of that you use ordinary Jamaican English that everybody can understand so Centrally okay. Speaking is a major part right. we're putting forward 30 second bite-sized pieces yeah. of financial literacy tips simple things so that you understand what to expect when you open a bank right account. yeah what to expect when you save with a regulated institution. We try to demystify the terms like deposit taking institution. And we're also saying to people, listen, when you have a credit card, don't just go spending. You need to read the contract. You need to understand how much you're going to be paying if you're late, what that means for you in terms of your profile, if you don't pay back in full on time. Right. Breaking down the concepts, how you create a budget, all of these elements. Mm -hmm. And most importantly, we're changing the language we use. Going back to your point, excellent. Yeah, point. yeah, yeah. That's exactly what we want. Mm -hmm. You'll see a series that Bank of Jamaica has launched called BOJ Real Talk. Mm -hmm. Right. And that uses a mix of our Jamaican patwa and English because people need to understand what we're trying to say. Where is that series? That's actually on our social media platforms, on our YouTube playlist mm -hmm. for Bank of Jamaica. Right. right. Mm -hmm. And in addition, we are keeping the language at the level of all of us when we were in high school back in the day, which is not too long ago for you fine ladies. You know, just the other day. <laughs> just, just the other, other day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we were about 14 or 15 years old, yeah. the world was ours. Whoa. We keep it in language right yeah. there. Right. Ordinary Jamaican child can understand mm -hmm. because we want to make sure that they get the concepts. How do they create a budget? Why should they save? Why should they make a financial plan? Mm -hmm. And how do they protect themselves? Why they should have a bank okay. account. Right. Why they should they have, have a bank account. account. Right. Because that's the program you had, which mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have your deposit insurance, so mm -hmm. you have protection, mm -hmm. right. which is so important. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you save under the mattress, and somebody come in and thief the money. That's it. Your own. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a hurricane and the whole house blow down. <laughs> That's the end of that. <laughs> so you keep it real that people understand. You know? Okay, so you spoke to children just now. Yes. Share with us specifically who are you targeting? Is it just children? Actually, what we're looking to achieve is we're trying to get messaging and content, I should say, that's really going to be relevant for children who are between the ages of 12 right. to 18. So okay. we're targeting just after PEP mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. high school. Okay. okay. So that's where we're going. Right. And um, Bank of Jamaica is partnering with a number of institutions to achieve that. Okay. All right. So, um, so when you say that you're targeting children ages 12 to 18, exactly how is it going to be done? What should we expect? What we have is a National Financial Literacy Action Plan. Mm -hmm. And there are a range of mechanisms and channels you hear in the 
communication speak, but mm -hmm. let's get rid of the jargon. Okay. Right. What we're doing is we're bringing to children via cartoons, right. via the star, right. via animation, right. via radio, very simple concepts that they can understand so that they can begin to know how to use money. Right. How do I use money daily? Right. Save it. Why should I save it? And how do I educate my parents around me about why I'm earning money, how I'm using it, how I'm investing it, and what is the difference? So if somebody meets them at the age of 18 right. and tells them, yes, man, if you put all your money into this little scheme we have. Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. 10% <laughs> <Yeah, 10%> a month. <laughs> Ten, yeah, 10% every month. Every month. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. Show them why like, <laughs> it's not feasible. Why. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They need to understand the distinction between simple interest and compound interest, how compound interest builds on top of what you earn and piles up faster. Mm -hmm. They need to understand, for example, you need to deal with people who are actually licensed and regulated by your regulators and not a man who just comes off the street, off the street sorry, yes. with fancy ads. You need to protect your money like you protect your life. Right. right. That's what we want to really get the messaging to them in textbooks, in ebooks, in animation, on radio. Because again, we recognize the environment within which we live. All right. So, uh, so, so not everybody um, has access to the same type of technology. Right. So we're trying to reach, like via this program, with maximum impact, getting the message to our children and to our young adults, of course, but we're starting with youth. That actually is a momentous task, yeah. <laughs> right? Because um, persons have a perception, mm -hmm. right? And we are getting to the children, but based on their household, that may actually be something that is, is countered. Mm -hmm. So I want to, to learn from you. Are you doing this? Is Bank of Jamaica doing this wholly and solely? by itself, are you, or are you partnering with anyone? As with any successful enterprise, mm -hmm. you need your teammates. So we have teammates in the Ministry of Finance, right. we have the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, right. a major partner mm -hmm. for us, as well as we have Consumer Affairs Commission, the Financial Services Commission, JDIC, who you had on the program. Wow. Yes. We have a Consumer Protection and Financial Capability Working Group. Okay. Right. And in fact, We'll get to talk a little bit more about what that working group has achieved in terms of understanding, taking the first steps to measure the levels of financial literacy among our youth. So we are going to see it in radio ads, cartoons. I, I suspect this is in the paper, mm -hmm. in the papers. Um, is there a push to have it as part of the curriculum? Yes. Um, oh. Is it going to be, are we going to have courses in high school or classes? I, I don't know what they call them. It's well, so long ago, you know? <laughs> Are you going you. to have a subject in high school, in, in primary school, prep school, called financial education? Is, there where, is that where we're going? This is where data is so important. Right. The work of the Ministry of Education is so important. As part of the work of that ministry and the dialogue we've been having with mm -hmm. them, they're targeting a particular program home and family life. We're not going to start off with anything convoluted that's going to frighten the children like financial education. But that's going to excite them. Yeah. If you go money management skills. Well, yes. well, yes. well, yeah. Well, I mean, well, that's the words that mean. Yeah, yeah. Children. Right, right. That's the end game. That's the ultimate end game of the National Financial Literacy Action Plan. But first we need to know where our kids are. Right. And first we need to start to, to begin to sensitize them, which is what we're doing with BOJ Real Talk, with the financial literacy tips. Because we've found, as with anything, mm -hmm. children are our first adapters to new information and new technology. Mm -hmm. And then they go home, and they say, but my teacher said. Mm -hmm. So and so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are you sure you did the right thing, mommy? Mm -hmm. And they start the discussion. Hopefully we can have them saying, well, BOJ said. So that's what we hope to achieve. That's the end game. The National Financial Literacy Action Plan is actually a five-year plan. Okay. And so we are at the earlier stages of that plan. Early stage, you mean you just started in 2021? No. Mm -hmm. Earlier stages in terms of implementation. Right. The plan actually was designed with a roadmap and a critical part of that right. is measurement in terms of survey work. So we actually started the process of procuring a market research firm to now conduct a financial literacy survey mm -hmm. of our youth, both in school and at risk, because we understand that the children who are at risk, who may not be in a typical educational environment, will not be getting the information in the same way. So we have to communicate via radio, mm -hmm. via jingles. We're looking to partner with a range of influencers. You can think of people that children trust and believe in. Because a bank in a nice pretty suit when you don't have no money. <laughs> it's true. You don't communicate a message. Right, so right. So Melanie, you spoke about survey. But do you have a timeline on when you expect the surveys to start? We have been doing all of the preparatory work on developing the survey instrument. Mm -hmm. 
there is a firm that we have procured. Right. We're going into the field, out into Jamaica, even in these COVID times, and they'll be meeting with parents and their children, and of course, our at-risk youth during October and November. So look out for that. They're going to be complying with all COVID protocols. Right. Don't fear. Masks will be on. And sanitize. <laughs> right. But they want to learn from the children. What do you, what have you ever been exposed to right. when it comes to learning about savings or budgeting mm -hmm. or interest? Do you even know what these concepts are? Because if we can properly measure where our population among our children are at this moment, mm -hmm. we can then tailor the message very precisely. We have some messaging out there. Ourselves, FSC, Consumer Affairs Commission, even some of our financial institutions have it. Right. But we need to refine it based on the results of that survey. So, so that is October and November this year. So there are, there are officers who will be going to homes, to homes. specifically, knocking on doors, knocking on doors and um, um, asking the permission of the parents for the, for the children to participate yes. in this. Um, and the parent will be there right. at all times. And we have our appropriate consent forms mm -hmm. that we're going to be showing the parents, yes. explaining the nature of the survey instrument. Why we're, why we're doing it, right. and what we want to learn from and, it. And you're doing and the information it. Information is, a, once, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. it's just I want to comfort parents a little bit. You're right. That we are keeping the identifying characteristics of the parent and the household confidential. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to be disclosed. So it's not that we're going to call your name. So the, so again, what, what is the, the objective of the survey? The ultimate objective mm -hmm. is to measure where we are now in terms of our youth, understanding yes. financial concepts, where they are right now. So that when we create the content, it meets the needs that we have identified right now based on the survey. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can't develop in a vacuum. This mm -hmm. is not a top-down approach. We have to actually make sure that what we do meets the needs of our population right now. And it's the first survey that we're planning. We're doing other surveys in train, like measuring the level of, of persons who are banked versus those who are unbanked. Mm -hmm. And the feedback you got from the street indicates why some people still will not interact with a family. It's, 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 it's mistrust. A trust factor. Right, <laughs> right. So based on your experience, why, why is there such a still a significant trust deficit? I think what is happening is that we need to package information in a way and in language that people understand. That's a real trust deficit. If you speak to me in a foreign language and I don't understand what you're saying, and you don't look like me, then it's very hard for me to even begin to listen to you and I just change the channel. Right. Yeah. And that's a problem. It's a it, it, it's very much of those who have versus those who do not. Okay. But if we change that and we start to make it really about our people and tell them this is what's in it for you, mm -hmm. and this is why you can trust a bank. Because it is, a licensed bank is actually regulated. Yeah. Right. And these are the mechanisms that Bank of Jamaica has put in to protect you and the financial system. You have that confidence. I will not, it's like having a relationship. I'm not going to go and marry you if I haven't been to you for an extensive period of time and I actually know that you're clean and you cook well and you do all of these things. There's no criminal records. Yes, <laughs> you know, there's people out in the back yeah. that I need to know about. Yeah, right. It's yeah. Like a relationship. We are trying this, this, this program of financial literacy to build a relationship with our people right. so that people see Bank of Jamaica as the Bank of Jamaica. So where can we find more information about this um, financial education program? Well, I'm so pleased and gratified that Centrally Speaking is featured on a YouTube playlist that yes. Bank of Jamaica has. Precisely. And you can find us right there with you. So okay. It's a financial inclusion playlist which will feature the BOJ Real Talk information. As I said, we're also on radio. We're on radio stations throughout the country. We have programs like Under the Law, which are featured on Power 106, say our partner this great station and you find other radio stations that promote our financial literacy content mm -hmm. and look for soon we're going to do some work we anticipate having a contract very soon with a star because we have to bring the message to the people i see where uh, the bank of jamaica through the financial inclusion program is going to make great strides or continue to make great strides in the development of our citizens financial knowledge all right, but if we were to say that financial inclusion ultimately contributes to growth of the economy, would we be correct? I think it contributes to sustainable development. Mm -hmm. Our growth is driven by entities like our micro, small and right. large sized enterprises. Mm -hmm. It's driven by confidence in what Bank of Jamaica does as a regulator when it comes to even, not just as a regulator, but even the work it does around its monetary policy council. That kind of confidence allows the private sector to make decisions about where they buy, 
how they sell, how they invest. So that's where growth really comes. Uh -huh. What we do is we underpin that work. Uh -huh. So you have had programs which explain now how Bank of Jamaica has basically evolved. Uh -huh. It's now independent, it has a number of councils, which really have a much more democratic process of decision making, right. which are completely informed by the work of its economists. Brilliant. Uh -huh. What we do in financial inclusion is say, okay, this is how the policy translates into reality through uh -huh. law, uh -huh. through business decisions, uh -huh. and how it matters to you. And this is why you can trust the entire financial system. So we underpin what everything else is happening with Bank of Jamaica as a central bank. Hey, thank you so much for joining us today to share with us about the work of Bank of Jamaica and in particular, financial education. Thank you so much for having me. Anna and Sheila, thank yes. you again. We yes. did learn a lot. We learned a lot. And you teach a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thank you. And we, 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 uh, we wish you all the best with the survey. Right. That, that is um, October and November of this year. Um, um, Jamaicans, please participate when you see Melanie and the crew come across. Yes. Yeah, I mean, no run them. Yes. <laughs> Welcome them. Me. Welcome them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All the best, Melanie. All the best, Thanks Mel. So all righty. So from Melanie at Bank of Jamaica in Kingston, Jamaica, we head to ancient Greece and India, where the earliest examples of lending were recorded. Mm. You know what time it is. It's time for the fun facts. The history of lending money can be traced back to over 4,000 years ago in Mesopotamia, where the very first loans were used by farmers. Based on the fact that a single seed could produce several plants with even more seeds, farmers would borrow seeds issued against a later payment after crops were harvested. Animals were used in a similar manner. Repayment of loans was issued with the birth of livestock. Another example of lending in ancient times can be found in Greece. Pawnbrokers would lend money in exchange for valuable items. These items were held by the pawnbroker for a contractual period during which the owner of the item could repay the loan plus an amount of interest to reclaim their goods. If the borrower defaulted on the loan, the pawnbroker would keep the items. Between 2010 and 2013, archaeologists discovered ancient wooden tablets called the Bloomberg Tablets, which documents that loans were also a part of everyday life in the Roman Empire. The tablets, which date back to 50 to 80 AD, shows how much was lent, at what interest, and what items were left with pawnbrokers as collateral. Whether you're a smart farmer, street vendor, big investor, every entrepreneur, you got to wise up, wise up about your money. You want to make sure say your money secure. When you need to grow, you have access to more. Financial inclusion means that individuals and businesses have access to useful and affordable financial products and services that meet their needs. Access to more money, more credit, whatever your business needs. When you work hard for your money, your money must work for you. In case you missed the interview with Melanie Williams, here's a quick reminder of the key points. You know what time it is. It's time for the Fast Facts. Whew. Number one, Bank of Jamaica has partnered with its financial inclusion partners, including the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Education, and the Financial Services Commission to promote financial literacy for Jamaican citizens and businesses. Number two, financial literacy is about teaching adults and children key financial concepts and money management skills like savings, budgeting, managing credit, so they can make smart financial decisions. Number three, financial literacy is a major part of financial inclusion. Financial inclusion is about increasing access and usage of financial services by Jamaican citizens and businesses. Number four, Bank of Jamaica will be conducting a financial literacy survey of students and at-risk youth in October and November 2021. Number five, Bank of Jamaica's financial literacy series, BOJ Real Talk, is on the Bank of Jamaica's YouTube channel. You can also hear all the financial literacy tips on radio. And that's all the time we have for today's Fast Facts. So viewers, that's all the time we have for the show today. We hope you learned something interesting from today's episode. Look out for more financial literacy content on all BOJ social media platforms. And just before you go, just before you leave us, can we say hello to the cameraman, Sheena? 
Yeah, may I think I we should. May I big up my cameraman, Marvin? Big up yourself <laughs> and big up everybody in the parish you're from, St. Thomas. And my cameraman. What do you mean? Tyrone. 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 Call, call Tyrone. Call Tyrone. <laughs> big up yourself from Clarendon, specifically Western Park. <laughs> Have you been tweeting us on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook? Every week we ask, I need to see the tweets and I need to see those comments on Facebook. Remember, Bank of Jamaica on Twitter at Central Bank JA or on Bank of Jamaica's Facebook page. You can also visit our website at boj.org.jm and of course, watch our upcoming programs of Centrally Speaking right here on your station. I'm Sheena. And as we say good evening and big up to the team at Bank of Jamaica. Big up BOJ. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm Anna. See you next time. Essentially Speaking is a production of Bank of Jamaica.